going to get you in trouble. So if you catch me up here in trouble, it's probably because I was thinking. Uh, well, I'm Jim Pankey. Uh, some of y'all may only know me if I, I do this. Y'all laugh, see, I know. There's my people. <laughs> uh, I, I spend a lot of time creating banjo content for anybody that wants it. And it's, it's all free online, so uh, I'm easy to find. Uh, so if, if you want to learn to play the banjo, I'm, I've, I've got you covered. I've got free lessons and just no, no paywall or anything like that. So help yourself. Go learn. Uh, and then come here and take my continuing banjo class. <laughs> learning the banjo in 1977 uh, which is a weird time to be to start learning the banjo because we, we were fairly well past the deliverance boom and had not moved into the next phase so I was just an odd child that decided to play the banjo despite you know nothing particularly fun in the media about it so <laughs> but had a small collection of, of recordings and such at home and mostly Flat and & Scruggs and Stanley Brothers stuff and, and, a, and an old banjo and, and I started trying to figure out what was going on. The first song I learned on the banjo, the first song all of my students this week have learned on the banjo and then I'll play some variations. It's called Cripple Creek. its own discipline to, to learn slow tunes on the banjo so hopefully I can play a couple of slow tunes they take up more space uh, <laughs> Thank you. 
learning to play, uh, like a lot of students, I was just kind of relegated to my bedroom, especially at that age, and I would sit and just play banjo. And I had, I had a lot of fun doing it, and I had a little record player, and I could put my records on and try to figure it out. And I spent a lot of time just by myself learning. We moved and I changed schools and still young enough to be riding the school bus. So I'm on the school bus with, you know, it's, it's like the first time on this bus. <laughs> and there's one seat on the bus and the guy sitting in the other seat beside it. He's a rather intimidating looking individual. <laughs> I don't know if I sit with this guy or not, but it's the only seat on the bus. You care if I sit down? He looked up me. He looked up at me, in all seriousness, said, "Have you had your shots?" <laughs> Great. <laughs> he didn't know he was a prophet, but <laughs> and I thought, okay, you're a smart aleck. I can get along with you. <laughs> so I sat down and we began to talk. And the only thing you know, that I was really into at that point was music and playing the banjo. And so that came up and he said, well, I play the guitar. I said, well, cool, we should get together and play. He says, I got one better than that. You should join the FFA and we'll start a string band. And I'm like, what is the FFA? <laughs> he said, it's the Future Farmers of America, man. Everybody knows that. And I'm like, well, I, well, okay, maybe everybody does now. Uh, and so, uh, what do I have to do to do that? You know, and he was like, "Well, you, you, you know, if you if you're in if you're in an agriculture class, then you can be part of the FFA." And I'm like, "All right, well, I've got electives, so I'm like, as soon as I could, I I went ahead and joined the FFA, and then wound up in a, in agriculture. And we did start a string band. There was a tradition at that school to have." little country string bands, which went back to the 1930s. And I said, well, okay, this, this is kind of cool. And so we played, we played for a variety of places. And so, you know, if you had a civic organization, <laughs> we played it and, <laughs> and stuff like that. And, and we did it just to raise money. And, and that's when I became a professional musician because I, I, my first paying job was a pig. Uh, because you had to have an agricultural experience as a kid and me not being a, really from an agricultural family now I had a pig and, and, and a band and so we got to play a lot of different places so it, it, it's fun uh, but, but a lot of that time was, was completely misspent I uh, I, I not that the uh, not that the banjo playing didn't really count as misspent, but uh, I, I learned times and times of just a foolish song. True story, names have been changed to protect the innocent. Maybe. And it's short, mercifully. And <laughs> now I'm hoping this is the right key, but here we go. Well, the first time I saw Dixie was in a parking lot in Denver. I was sitting in my pickup truck alone. She came out of the store, took one look at my truck, and asked me if I'd like to take her home. She said she had a new place, but we went to her old place, cause there was something she'd forgot to do. Well, one hug and one kiss later, she unplugged the refrigerator. That's when I learned I was helping Dixie move. <laughs> <laughs> Told you, 
short. <laughs> and, <clears throat> uh, y'all excuse my voice, it, it just is what it is. Nobody said I could sing. I, they didn't say I wouldn't, though. So. <laughs> Well, when I was a lad in a fishing town, an old man said to me, you can spend your life, your jolly life, just sailing on the sea. You can search the world for pretty girls till your eyes are weak and dim. But don't go swimming with a mermaid son if you don't know how to swim. Well, I signed on to a whaling ship on my very first day at sea. I seen a mermaid in the waves, she was reaching up to me. Come live with me in the sea, said she, and down on the ocean's floor. I'll show you a million wondrous things you've never seen before. Well, over I jumped and she pulled me down, down to her seaweed bed. And a pillow made of tortoise shell she placed beneath my head. She fed me shrimps and caviar upon a silver dish. From her head to her waist, she was just my taste, but the rest of her was a fish. <laughs> oh, her hair was green as seaweed, and her skin was kind of pale. And that face that clung on your broken heart, and I love that girl with all my heart. Don't I see what I would have, what I'd not do, yeah. I did not like it. I only liked the upper part. I did not like the tail. I'm trying not to get confused there. <laughs> well, then one day she swam away and I sang to the clams and the whales. How missed her fins, her seaweed hair, and the silvery shine of her scales. But then her sister, she swam by and set my heart a whirl. Cause her upper part was an ugly fish, but the bottom part was a girl. <laughs> yeah, her toes were pink and rosy, and her skin was kind of pale, and I loved that girl with all my heart. No, let's see. <laughs> Sorry, y'all, it's early. <laughs> and those legs, they plumb near broke my heart, and I love that girl with all my heart. No, I don't give a damn about the upper part. <laughs> and that's how I end my tale. <laughs> oh. I truly hope you all are enduring this, uh, enjoying this. Uh, <laughs> all right, one more stupid song. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I sat last night and wondered, do I know any actually serious songs? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> uh, I don't know what key I'm in because my voice... steamy-eyed glances nearly drove me wild. So we drove out to the country and we parked beneath the stars where you steamed up my windshield and set my soul apart. You moved into my place that very same night. I was so happy it was love at first sight. Then I came home early one day the next week the man in my closet said he's playing hide and seek. <laughs> well, I may be stupid, but I'll never understand why he was playing hide and seek with all his clothes in his hand. <laughs> so get your feet off my table, your head on my bed, get your hat off my hat rack and put it on your head. Get your clothes out of my closet. Put them all on your back, get your furling husky records, cause it's time for you to pack. Get your arms from around me, it ain't no use to cry. Get your tongue out of my mouth, cause I'm kissing you goodbye. <laughs>
up a story and I'll tell it real quick. <laughs> I don't do Go Tell Aunt Rody, but one of the songs, I, 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 I got asked on somewhat regular basis to be part of a career day at one of the elementary schools, New Hope Elementary School, and I, I would go and do career day. I'm, I'm not sure why I me. Mean, maybe it was just to be an example. <laughs> Good reasons to go get a real job. <laughs> I'll be a banjo player, but so we had a had a group of kids come through. You know, I I, I was just in one place. The kids would come to me, and it was it was very young kids. I don't know if they were, they they may have been kindergarten kids, and they weren't interested in career day. They just wanted me to play and sing songs. So I sang. I did not sing them all of those, but uh, <laughs> but the teacher said that they knew. She'll be coming around the mountain. I'm thinking, that's great. I know that song myself. I've sang that all my life. And I thought, well, we'll do this one. And uh, I knew all the little parts on the betweens. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? It's like she'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. And then the yee-haw. And so, you know. And the, you know, and the woe back when she stops her, yeah. stops her horses. Yeah. So it goes something like this. I don't know if I can sing in this key, but y'all can help me. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Well, she'll be riding six white horses when she comes. She'll be riding six white horses when she comes. She'll be riding six white horses. She'll be riding six white horses. Now, at this point in the song, we might have sang another verse. What are we going to have to eat? What, 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 what's, what's the song lyric go? Oh, we'll all have chicken and dumplings. All right, so that's great. We've got a plan. But to have chicken and dumplings, you got to do something. We're going to kill the old red rooster when she comes. So... And, and when we get, you know, so, you know, we'll have chicken and dumplings when she comes. Yum, yum. And then we kill the old red rooster when she comes. Well, when I was a kid, we sang just the biggest chop, chop. <laughs> lessons learned that day. <laughs> and I looked down, and there's this prettiest little blonde-haired girl, and she had the biggest blue eyes that were magnified by her glasses and the tears. I have, I have killed the old red rooster. And that's when I learned you can't kill the old red rooster anymore. The teacher in the class looks over at me like I had grown an extra head. And, and, she's, and she quickly changes the words to, I will, we'll get old red rooster when she comes. It's like, okay. That, uh, so I, I did learn a lesson. So anyway, you can't kill the old red rooster anymore. Uh, all right, on a more serious note, we'll do something. <laughs> Thank you. 
get sleepy, feel free to take a nap. <laughs> Free to go eat. From 1961, uh, a man named Floyd Kramer recorded this. So. Thank you. 